Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about what our solar system may actually look like from the outside. And even though for the longest time we believed it sort of looked like this with the heliosphere forming this unusual comet-like formation, some of the new studies think that the actual image is more similar to what you see right here. A very unusual and a very peculiar shape that is kind of difficult to describe. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So we have a pretty good idea of what planets look like, we also have a pretty good idea of what um, some of the solar system looks like from the outside. Specifically here, if we were to move out uh, to the point where the Neptune orbits, we do have a good understanding of that particular shape. But the thing is, the solar system is technically defined by the so-called heliosphere which scientifically is defined as the sphere of influence of our Sun. Normally, this sphere of influence is created through various magnetic interactions, specifically through the release of the uh, very strong solar winds and a lot of other particles from the outside interacting with the particles coming from within. So in some sense, this is kind of what we believe the whole thing looks like. And the thing is, both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes left this particular heliosphere and are now traveling in the so-called interstellar space. And this is why we finally were able to actually start analyzing the shape of this heliosphere and even try to understand what's really happening on the inside as opposed to the outside. You may have already seen the video I made previously about the Voyager probe and more specifically Voyager 2 which is somewhere right here in the location in the solar system, actually just outside of the solar system. And as Voyager 2 was leaving the heliosphere it discovered that there was a lot of really really hot plasma. I referred to this back then as a kind of a firewall because technically fire is also plasma and so essentially these really hot particles are extremely unusual and they're present right here in front of the heliosphere forming a kind of a, well, firewall. And all of this is actually formed because the solar wind, as it's being expelled from the sun, creates a kind of a pressure right in front of the sun as it travels across the galaxy. And the interaction between the particles from the outside and the particles from the inside do create this unusual phenomenon in front. But the thing is, there's not a lot of particles here. Um, usually there's approximately one particle per cubic centimeter, which is about this big. So these environments are really low in density. But this here is a little bit more dense and the area within the heliosphere is also a lot denser as well. So it's kind of like an interaction between higher density and lower density regions, while at the same time the interaction between different types of charged particles. And we also understand that heliosphere is pretty much essential to the survival of life on our planet. It does protect life from a lot of cosmic rays from outside of the solar system that would actually most likely increase the radiation on our planet dramatically. But because of the heliosphere, we're protected and sort of sheltered from all of this dangerous radiation from outside. And in terms of the actual distance uh, to, I guess, the border of heliosphere, it's approximately 120 astronomical units, which is about three times the distance of Pluto to the Sun or I guess 120 times the distance of Earth to the Sun. So it is pretty far away, but understanding this heliosphere and of course its shape is really important when it comes to understanding solar systems or star systems, and also just in general the interaction between various really highly charged particles, and of course how all of this relates to the protection of our own planet. But for the longest time we always believed that the actual shape was more comet-like, basically sort of like this, and a lot of this evidence came uh, from other stars. For example, this is what one of these stars looks like if you were to look at it from um, from here, from Earth, and it does seem to appear like a comet-like um, environment. Basically, you get a comet-like shape and this unusual formation in front of it which is formed by the star's heliosphere. A somewhat similar example can be seen right here uh, near the star known as LL Orionis, and you can kind of see that it does seem to form this comet-like formation as well. But I think one of the best known examples is the star known as Mira, where you can definitely see how comet-like it seems to appear. And the thing is, we've always believed that this is pretty much what solar system would have as well, which is why all of the NASA analysis always sort of makes it this, this kind of a shape. But turns out that we might have been wrong, and mostly because of these, some of the more recent observations from other probes, like for example Cassini and New Horizons. And it all began with the analysis of data from the Voyager probes, and uh, essentially back in 2015, 
Using a lot of data from the Voyager probe, some of the scientists were able to emulate what the potential heliosphere looks like, and the shape that they got was actually this. It was a little bit of more of a crescent than a comet. And even though it still sort of resembles a comet-like formation, it's really more of two uh, very specific, very unique shapes on two sides. So in other words, right in the middle, there was pretty much nothing. The heliosphere sort of ended right here. And this model was uh, not really well received at first because it didn't really add up with some of the other information we had. Because a few years later, uh, the Cassini probe was able to create another model, and that model seemed to predict that the actual shape was almost perfectly spherical. And in some sense, this contradicted the first assumption. But now we have even more data, and this time it's from the New Horizons mission that is technically still inside the solar system, but it's on the way out, and it's already been able to collect quite a lot of various data in regards to heliosphere as well. And the main difference uh, between this new model and previous models is that it actually made a really interesting assumption. It essentially divided all of the charged particles that it was able to detect into the ones coming from within the solar system and the ones coming from the outside. Before that, we kind of just assumed that they were all the same, but now we know that they're not. They are actually coming from two different directions. And some of these particles that are coming from the outside could also be neutral at first. They actually might have no charge. And because of the interaction with the heliosphere and the sun and other cosmic rays, might eventually become charged with time. And the main discovery of the New Horizons mission is that these external particles that were captured from the outside of the solar system eventually become much hotter and much more energized before essentially, I guess, turning around and then following the solar wind on the way out of the solar system. So in other words, there's a very interesting interaction between the external and internal particles, and they do create these unusual, well, technically current-like formations, which is essentially the unusual shape that you see right here. These unusual currents are formed through the interaction of different types of charged particles as they essentially move around the heliosphere and then slowly get carried out of the solar system completely. And so by modeling two different types of particles, the researchers behind the paper you can find in the description below discovered that it probably resembles something like this. Basically a combination of a perfect sphere that we detected previously and a crescent shape that we also detected previously as well. In other words, it's a combination of two, and it does seem to reconcile both theories pretty well. With the only major difference being that inside of the sphere, we'll find two different types of particles at least. So some of the cooler particles coming from the solar wind, and some of the more hot particles that came from the outside and got charged by the solar wind and are now being carried out. And even though this is just a model for now, we're not entirely sure if this is exactly what it looks like, this will definitely give us a reason to kind of zoom in a little bit more to some of these other stars we're looking at and try to identify if something similar is happening in there as well. Mostly because we believe that this interaction between the heliosphere and of course the external uh, particles that are coming from outside of the solar system are absolutely essential for an ability of a solar system or a star system to maintain at least one planet similar to planet Earth and its ability to actually be protected from the radiation from outer space. In other words, the heliosphere is absolutely crucial for having habitable planets, and we think that studying heliosphere and understanding what makes the solar system so different is really important for us in trying to find other stars that might actually have similar planets. Because today, scientists still think that our solar system is a little bit weird compared to everything else. And maybe having a different heliosphere is actually one of these unusual phenomena that other stars also don't have. So this is something we want to learn a little bit more about, just so we can look for other stars similar to our sun. But unfortunately, except for this model of this shape right now, that's kind of all we know about our own solar bubble. Once we discover other stars that have their heliospheres visible and once we can compare them to some of the other discoveries we make in the next few years, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video because this is a very, very important topic for the discovery of other habitable planets. And also, I'm sure as different probes, such as the New Horizons probe, also end up leaving the solar system and past the boundary of about 120 astronomical units, essentially leaving the heliosphere, we're going to be able to discover even more things about the strange and unusual shape of the bubble we live in. But that's really it. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and possibly come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting this channel Patreon. It does help me quite a lot, and alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm also wearing right now as well. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.